Hello and welcome back to another video. So today we'll be going through this very nice geometrical problem here. So it asks us, what is the largest square that can fit inside a right-angled isosceles triangle? Okay, so here's our setup. So I've already drawn our square inside this right-angled isosceles triangle here. So we can go ahead and quickly draw that right angle in as well. And we know that since this is the right angle here, we know that this side length must be equal to this side length here as it is an isosceles triangle. So what can we do now? Well, we recognize that we have a square inside. So what are the properties of a square? Well, we know that all sides are the exact same length. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is call that side length X there. So now I'm calling the side length of this square length X. Maybe I should start thinking about the actual side lengths of the triangle as well. So what we should do is let's maybe call the entire section here. We'll call that Y. So that way we now know that those two identical sections on that triangle have length Y. And now we can use Pythagoras' theorem, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared, except here, of course, we are using y and y to figure out this hypotenuse length here. So that ends up being y squared plus y squared. Well, that's equal to 2y squared, and that's equal to c squared. So we can say clearly that this length here, this hypotenuse, is going to have a length of root 2y. Okay, fantastic. So now we've got that sorted. Let's start looking at what we know about this whole system here. Well, we know that the area of the large triangle, I'm going to note that A sub L triangle, so that way we can kind of know what's going on here. Well, that area is going to be equal to half the height times the base. So I can rewrite that now as half time outside of Y times by Y, or simply Y squared over 2. So now I know that the entire area of this whole massive triangle is equal to Y squared over 2. Fantastic. Now, what about the individual components? Well, we've got two identical triangles, both within this larger triangle. So we've got maybe triangle one, I'll call this A1, and triangle two, I'll call that A2. And then we also have the area of this square. Now, I think the area of the square is pretty easy for us to work out. So let's get ahead in working that one out here. So A sub square, keeping my notation fairly straightforward here. Hopefully you can follow along. So that area is simply going to be equal to x times x. Okay, fantastic. So that's just going to be x squared. So nothing too crazy so far. Now, what about the other triangles here? Well, I know that A2 has a height of x. And I know A1 has a base of x. Okay. Now, what about this length over here? I can actually go ahead and say that that length there is equal to y minus x since that's exactly what we see is going on between the relation here of this x and this y. So when I take x from the y, that length there is all I'm left with. And in fact, similarly for up here as well. So this is going to be y minus x on this triangle as well. So what we see now is that a1 equals a2, and that length is actually going to be equal to, or area I should say, is going to be equal to 1 half times the height, which is x, times the base, which is y minus x. Okay, so now we've figured out, well, a1 equals a2, and we also know the area of the square. So we also know that they will all must add up to give us y squared over 2. So what we can say now is that a1 plus a2 plus a sub square is equal to y squared over 2. Okay, so... Equivalently to saying a1 plus a2, I can just say 2 times a1. So I might go ahead and do that. So I'll just write 2 times a1 plus a square equals y2 over 2. So a1, that's equal to a half x times by y minus x. So 2 times a half. So let's start filling this all out. And so let's see what we are left with. So now we'll have 2 times a half. So that will disappear. Now it's just going to be x times by y minus x and then plus the area of the square, which is plus x squared, and that whole thing is equal to y squared over 2. Okay, let's continue. So now let's expand this out, and we get xy minus x squared plus x squared equals y2 over 2. So those clearly cancel out, and all we're left with is xy equals y squared over 2. Divide both sides by y, and we get our final result saying that x must be equal to y over 2. And so now let's refer back to what the question asked us. So what is the largest square that can fit inside a right angled isosceles triangle? So we need to look at the area of this square now. So we can say that the area of that square 
is going to be equal to y squared over 4. And that's our final answer there. So that is the largest area of the square that can fit into a right-angled triangle. So y squared over 4, where y is going to be the length for the section that is identical on the isosceles triangle. There we go. So, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like, subscribe, comment, do as you please, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.